Okay, so hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. And I figured in lieu, in lieu, or how do I pronounce that word, of my reading slump rant video, I figured I would just talk about my current reads and just what I'm thinking of them so far. So technically, according to my Goodreads, I have like 20 some books that are being currently read. These are the most prominent or the most consistent currently reads I've been doing or like the most updated on them. So I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 books that I'm technically currently reading pretty well considering the whole slum situation. So let us just get into it. So first of all, let me talk about the ones that are might not be on this list anymore. And that is God Killer by Hannah Kanner or Kanner. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. And the reason why it probably won't be on the list anymore is because I'm just very bored at where I'm at. Like, I'm so bored. And if it's the slump or something else, I don't know, but I am just bored. And the one thing right now that my slump situation cannot handle is just how wordy this book is being, especially for the chapter that I'm on, which is Elogast's chapter, which is chap- does it say the number? Chapter 8? I think he was also chapter 7. Anyways, it's just, it just feels so wordy, like there's so much description, but not all of it seems particularly necessary. I don't know, like it just, it's just overtly wordy descriptions, which I'm just not a fan of right now. And so I just feel like I'm reading a lot of words with no necessary purpose. So that's why right now, while I did try to read this because it's less than 300 pages, which should be an easy or fast read, I just can't anymore with this book. So unfortunately, this might be no longer touched on as much. It really sucks because I have so many special edition like book box subscription books that I need to read and I just can't get into them. It's very frustrating. The next one that might get taken off, depending on how I'm feeling, is Little Thieves by Margaret Owen. And I know, I know, I said that I bought this because I wanted to sit down, read, and annotate the crap out of a book. But, I don't know. <laughs> this one might, may or may not, I might still end up consistently reading it, but... Out of all the other ones, this is one of the ones that I've actually gotten the least into with my reading. So I only got to like... I just got to chapter 2. I just got to chapter 2. I had this book since July 24th and I was reading it around that time and I just got to chapter 2. And it's August 5th. Like, you know... So those are the two like lowest tier of this list and the next one this one I feel like the next two I feel like are very valid for why I am reading them so slowly but the first one is Tomorrow and Tomorrow and Tomorrow by Gabrielle Zevin. And the reason why for this one I'm reading so slowly is because it's it's emotionally stressful. Okay, because I am actually quite invested in these characters and their lives and their relationships, but what's happening in their lives and their relationships <laughs> is stressing me out. And in a sense, I don't want to see any change. Because I like the way the relationship is between two of the characters specifically. But like I mentioned in my previous, uh, in my K-Tripathon vlog, the fourth week, that 
a friend of mine hinted that it prom is not going to end the same. I was like, I can't read. <laughs> and just be heartbroken like that. So, this one is just my own decision to just push off the ending as far away as I can. So, this is on me. This not fully reading this book is on me. So, I will take the blame for that. You know, this one really is on me. It's not on my slump, it's on me. But yeah, it's going good. It's quite fun. But yeah. And then the next book that this one's not kind of on me, kind of not on me. It's a weird situation, but it is Babel by R.F. Kuang. I got to chapter 8. I finally broke 100 pages in this baby. And I'm liking it. I think at the point that I stopped, I am quite bored because... Oh wow, I started this the 6th of April. Dang. Anyways. um, Oh my gosh, 6 minutes passed. I only talked about 3 books. Holy crap. But... Uh, so at the point that I'm at... I am quite bored because it feels like a very slow build up and I think one reason why I'm also feeling quite bored is because I think Babel is a very strong like character driven story but I personally don't feel attached to any of the characters. Robin a little bit, Rami not like attached but I like him but I think you have to get invested in the characters quickly in order to actually enjoy the story. I don't think I'm there yet in terms of being invested in the characters, so I think that's also why I'm not fully invested or um, engaged. And yeah, also I did take a break because it was kind of boring and just the sheer amount of information that was happening and the slow buildup. And I, even with the time and technically the mental energy I should be having in this break, I don't have it. So, <laughs> reading Babel is a bit of a struggle. It's a little bit of a struggle. But, you know, it is one that I do want to finish, especially before my semester officially starts. Even before it, it like, even before it's official start, I would like to finish it because I will get busy. I probably won't have time. And since I started it, I'm not one to reread the parts that I already read when I pick up a, when I pick a book back, when I pick a book back up again. So I should re I should read this quickly before I forget everything that happened. So yeah. And then one book I started reading and then I immediately stopped because I was feeling so infuriated by what was going on and that was the scum villains self-saving system volume 3 because I will admit this series is funny and freaking wild okay like just the things that happen are so crazy and our main character is so funny with his internal monologue but this book has one of the tropes that I hate the most and not even in a funny way like I read that one fan fiction of that did it so good because it was so funny but this book has the most infuriating take on misunderstandings and miscommunication trope that I have ever seen in my life like the misunderstandings and the miscommunication technically start in the first book and it's going on as strong as like stronger than ever in the third book and i'm pretty sure this is the last volume of it the fourth volume i think is a collection of short stories on other characters and just the epilogue but this is so strong and it's so infuriating and frustrating to read because if they just talk to each other properly like air everything out they probably wouldn't be dealing with all these issues in their relationship and just what happened between them like i was getting so mad i immediately had to stop but maybe i will continue 
just to you know finish the story push through everything i know it's a good ending so yeah but oh my gosh it's just <sighs> okay the next book is one that i feel like i have a good amount of time for like i don't need to rush myself to read it i am reading this to annotate and give to a friend and she wanted to read it um i'm like interest i i am intrigued because it is my first of this take so i am curious but it's dark water daughter by hm long and right now i'm not feeling too much i just started chapter i'm on i just got to chapter four and i feel like what happened isn't enough for me to like know what i'm feeling towards the book um, I, I am not the biggest fan of the two main characters. <laughs> I think part of it is because I think I'm being a little unnecessarily harsh towards both of them. But at the same time, I'm kind of like, to the, to the girl, I'm kind of like, that is kind of the consequences of the action you chose to make. So, yeah. And then for the guy, I'm kind of like what's done is done you're saying what's done is done but you're still kind of acting like this i don't really understand it so that kind of stuff i'm not a big fan of them right now but i do really like the writing i think hm long's writing is doing a really good job in capturing the dark stormy oceany vibes that come i'm assuming with a pirate fantasy so yeah and i will keep reading and annotating and then hopefully and that i enjoy my first pirate fantasy and now for the last currently reading that this is the one that i have the most faith in that i didn't want to mention in my reading slump but as it is a currently reading i will have to mention it here and it is song of silver flame like night by m Ameli, Ameli Wenjiao, I think that's how you pronounce her name. I'm so sorry if it's not. But this one, I am the most, I've been reading the best about. I'm not sure why. Um, I really don't know why. Is it because like for a majority of last year and I think beginning of this year, I read, I read a lot of like East Asian fantasy books and like is my mind a bit more hardwired to that now like is that why this one out of everything else is the most fun i don't know i don't know but i will say i'm very i'm having quite some fun i'm on page 130 so i i also managed to break 100 pages in this and um yeah nothing like amazing about this book but it's like a very consistently fun and i'm like interested to see what happens in this storybook and one thing i will admit i think really really affects my reading experience is how much i like <laughs> the physical book itself like not just the book cover but just how much i like the page the page and i think the size of the book matters a lot to me because of all the books that i currently have here these two are my favorite to just hold and read through like let me let me tell you why and then this is like for paperback i also really like this let me get into this one first first floppy i love floppy second there's images in here i love that third the pages are nice and thick the font is a good size for the size of the paperback like overall big fan of this construction of the book second for my hardbacks i love a big sized hardback okay oh so for one reason one reason i was disappointed about this book is because first the page is like the dark the dark color thin book page that has a smell i'm not a fan of and for me it just looks like it won't last very long and it's stiff you know and it's small like i like bigger size books because that means bigger fonts which i am a bigger fan of so for like <clears throat> hardbacks for these two 
the paper I found out matters so much to me because I a huge reason other than my friend's annotations that I'm enjoying with this book is just what it feels like to read it the pages are so nice and thick the font is just such a nice size like I'm in love if a page is like this nice color and it's thick bro immediately I will love that heart pack this one isn't necessarily the same type of paper but it's not as thick but the font <laughs> is so nice and big and I love it so much it's just so nice to read it if you know what I mean um but yeah so I realized that's a huge reason as to why what impacts my reading experience and therefore makes me read it that is also why when I order a book I try really hard to find editions and like comparisons because of how of like what I like in a physical book so this one is nice and big you know font is really small like it's surprisingly small for this size and the page is like nice I guess but the font is just so small and it just feels too light colored because of the font and the font size and then Babel Babel actually isn't that bad it's like pretty nice which I think despite the heavy information I was going through I still kept reading it it's not super thick but it's a nice color the font's a nice size there's a good margin space for me to annotate and it it, it does lie, lie nice and flat I prefer these ribbon spines over this just glue based ones because I feel like it just opens up better like that but yeah so Babel's not bad um god killer what about you yeah god killer is also not bad but the con the story itself is what making it pretty boring so i don't know how i got to that but i realized that's also a huge aspect of what i think subconsciously or i get consciously now uh encourages me to keep reading a book so yeah for now this is just because i don't want to see the ending like i don't i don't like what i'm what I'm like basically decided in my head is gonna happen but yeah so that is my currently readings and what I think of them there might be oh no there's one more actually my last currently reading is if we were villains by Emma Rio and this one I'm having a lot of fun this one I think is because I'm also buddy reading this with a friend and just I think my approach to this book probably wasn't the best, but it's just the approach I ended up taking because I'm buddy reading this with a friend. But I'm kind of reading this as like, as if I'm hearing the gossip on just what happens. You know, like, do you know what I mean? It's like when you're hearing somebody just tell you like oh did you hear about what happened? And you're like no what happened? And they're like oh like listen to this and they tell you the whole story it just kind of feels like I'm reading a story that's being given to me like that which makes it more fun but also it's just I just want to know what actually happens and so it's very engaging I am having a fun time I can't wait to finish this book and find out like the absolute truth of what happened and yeah so now that was it for my currently readings and my what I'm thinking like what I think of them at the point that I'm at in lieu of my reading slump rant so I currently have eight books going on at once technically more but yeah so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and my reading slump rant video let me know how many books you're currently reading. Let me know what book you are currently reading and what you think of it down below. And I will see you guys next time. Bye.